And make sure you tune in to the GT World Challenge uh, powered by AWS when it does start in real life. But for now, we're going to be going into the one hour final. Uh, Noyox on pole position, Tazato second, uh, Camera third, Mike Noble fourth, and Petit in fifth. I, I don't, I'd have gone for Noyox and Camera probably in the top five in qualifying, David, but I would have put Tanitza and Benito and the likes of those up there as well. Well, we've also, because of his last lap, got Hosseini to go on to pole position right at the very oh. end, just sneaked ahead. Okay. Um, although I noticed that he's got rid of his Vodafone livery just to confuse us going into for that. But it's Mercedes top four, Lamborghini five. Your first Ferrari only comes ninth. So there's, I'm sure, going to be an awful lot of shuffling in this as we get set. Uh, and the cars then go down through the first chicane. So let's have a, a thought or two from John Watson, first of all, because to make the point, John, you've got to get through this section without drama. Then you can think about your race. Very much so, and getting through turns one, two, and three are not any easy task. But what I've been noticing while you and Jacko have been chatting away, uh, I noticed that a number of the cars are carrying a 20 kilogram penalty, which I assume is what you call balance of performance in, in our language. But the two Ferraris that have won the first and second race aren't carrying any penalty. A 20 kilograms penalty over the duration of an hour race, particularly in terms of tire wear, to some degree, maybe brake wear because there's a, a lot of braking goes on at Mons, a lot of heavy braking from high speed. I still think that those two Ferraris placed on the fifth row of the grid are the two, I'm going to say, prancing horses, the two dark horses in this race that still are going to be there when the flag falls or the lights go out or the, or the flag falls come the end of one hour. I don't disagree with that. I think the extra 20 kilos because the BOP for Mons is all worked out on a three hour endurance race. We've never had these there. Now we have got sprint races of a one hour duration, obviously. So the, the BOP is tweaked for the Mercedes with the extra weight to try to rein them back in uh, over one hour rather than three. I think that's how it's panned out. And you can see how many Mercedes we've got. So is it going to be Ferrari? Is it going to be Mercedes that comes out on top? Ben Constantinuris has been studying all of this. Um, thoughts, Ben, who's going to win? A difficult one to say, as you say, the Ferraris have been so strong late in the race. The Mercedes definitely have to manage this race for them. And then what about the pesky Lamborghinis? Mike Noble's put himself in a great position in fifth position. Dennis Lind, I expect more from him down in 18th, but he didn't qualify very well also for the semi-final. So expect him to race better. And just a reminder to everybody who perhaps is ch tuning in just for this final that we do not have contact in the first lap so we turn off contact for the first lap to make sure that everybody can get through that first lap without lots and lots of chaos which in every single race at monza through those first two chicanes happens and so they are able to drive through each other and not crash on the first lap after that it's anybody's anybody's game so down they come then into the Parabolica and we get set to go racing it's one hour and let's find out then who is going to be victorious at the end of 60 minutes of racing we're looking at around 28 laps or so a Mercedes we've seen be really really good across the qualifying sessions and now as the field accelerates towards the Parabolica it is Amir Hosseini then on pole position, uh, Niels Noyox alongside Luca Tazato, and then Arthur Camera on the second row, all Mercedes mounted, but then factor in Lamborghini, factor in Ferrari as well, as we are about to unleash the cars for this SRO Esports GT Charity Challenge final. Up towards the timing line, they will come. They're going to be released in a moment. Hey. And who is it going to be that comes out on top? Who is it going to be that gets into turn one ahead of the pack? You've got to say that Hosseini would no doubt be the man to put your money on, given the start he made in the first race. What can the Ferraris do as well from mid-pack lining up alongside one another on the fifth row? The two race winners, both on the fifth row of the grid. It's not the tidiest of starts, but Hosseini slightly ahead as they creep up towards the line when we go to green. Now the race gets underway and Hosseini is away nicely. Then he won down to turn one. Niels Noyuk slots in behind him. Then you've got Arthur Camera in third place. Mike Nobel trying to get through the traffic as well in the Lamborghini as they dive now down towards the braking zone. Who is it going to be that comes out on top? Hosseini it is, and he'll try and build that lead just as he did in the earlier semi-final. 
so far so good everybody safely out of turn one thus far mercedes one two three four five i think as well because you've got axel petit up past mike noble as the cars now thunder their way through the curve of grandy what it so far so good yes opening lap always very very crowded coming down into the second chicane lamborghini on the inside coming into that second chicane hopefully he can get the high ground go side by side has to go the long way around well in fact he managed to take that position away, but it's the consolidation, again, of Hussaini and the Mercedes from that pole position. Clear track, nothing to focus on other than what's directly ahead of him. He will be dragging the two Mercedes directly behind along with him, but since they're so similarly powered, there's not probably going to be very much of a threat or a challenge in this opening lap. So the cars accelerate towards the Variante Ascari then with Mike Gain just there ahead of him for the moment is the Tosato Mercedes they get to the braking zone for the Variante Ascari up front the Mercedes of Ami Hosseini trying to break clear now can he do so as the cars come to the Parabolica he's trying to get the toe broken against Noyox who is there in second place Arthur Camera third who was there all the way pretty much in the earlier race back second in the very end of the first of the semi-finals Mike Nobel on the outside line look diving into the Parabolica Behind him is Brioni's Lamborghini. Ahead of them is Tosato in the Mercedes. And Dennis Lynn, 15th, is the first of the pro drivers as they complete lap one. But just as we saw in semi-final one, Amir Hosseini up front, breaking away. And that was a good first lap by the pole man, Ben Constantinos, wasn't it? Because Hosseini now is clear up front, albeit with yet more Mercedes tucked up behind him. Yeah, he's got Niels Nijox right behind him. Plenty of side-by-side -side action on the outskirts, the top 10 positions. And those two Ferraris right in there as well. This is the first opportunity for, for contact and damage. And Tanitza and Benito have managed to get through cleanly with Pfeiffer there too in that yellow uh, Mercedes. Ahead of them though, uh, Mike Noble and Brioni. Great start from Brioni to be, mm. to be there trying to get past to Zato. One or two skipping the chicane, bouncing all over the curb as we saw. Mike Nobel then on the inside line trying to place as they dive into the second of the chicanes but still alongside him is Zato and Pfeffer just clips the back of Tonitza's Ferrari the semi-final one winner stands his ground keeps his place at least for now 57 minutes of course still two goes the field pulls through there in 789 is Christian Lozanov who went well late in the uh, second of the semi-finals got on with the job and carved his way into contention but you can see now how close this is one long line of cars merge the two top 20s together you get a very competitive race indeed Hosseini leading but only just at the moment looking at Dennis Lynn's progress from up to 13th position now making good progress on these early laps you'd expect him to be right up there okay he's a pro driver but has huge amounts of endurance experience not on SEC but on RF2 instead and uh, Lind will be a favoured driver for all of the sim racing community uh, there he is in the Lamborghini with Santero in front of him he is the best of the real world drivers he's way ahead 10 places ahead of uh, Caroli who is down in 23rd uh, but uh, we expect him to get into the top 10 pretty quickly. Although, saying that, in 10th position is Endo Benito, the winner of that second se semi-final. So Mercedes, one, two, three, four, heading down towards the chicane. Hosseini it is that leads. Not sure about his line going into the chicane there. Easy to Pfeffer trying to dive up on the inside of Tonitza. And oh. there's drama behind this contact. And that would have been Benito being tagged sideways off the road. He has gone there. Oh dear, more contact. And here, what is, you get Mercedes and McLaren and more Mercedes, mayhem. That's what we kind of expect at that part of the circuit. Yeah, it's an entire domino effect once one car gets tagged. It then swings around and usually into the path of a car that's following and the inevitable that's taken place in that first, second, third corners of that, what we call the first chicane. And that's broken up that midfield pack. It was basically being led by Mike Noble and the Lamborghini with Brioni behind them. But ahead of that fifth place, the four Mercedes are just doing what they've done pretty much every time we had them on camera and that's pulling away from the rest of the field and with this the, the bunching that we're getting if one driver makes an error it will compound itself all the way down through the following cars so everybody's got to be on their toes and try and really not look at the car directly ahead of you but read maybe three or four cars to see that that isn't going to be the trouble spot that might take you out so Dennis Lynn has been involved in that. Uh, Palowski down in 35th position now. Lozanov was another of the Mercedes involved. Eamon Murphy got spun round late on. Uh, Lorito also and Luca Giotto sadly also oh. involved in that uh, five-car shunt 
on the outside uh, coming out of that first chicane they are all now at the tail of the field but we still have 40 cars running out of the 40 starters and we have Dennis Lind up into the top 10, which was where you were kind of predicting he might be. So he's getting on with the job and he's not a million miles away from being able to uh, get the number 563 Lamborghini towards the podium here. However, we've got penalties starting to be applied for one or two, I notice. We'll keep an eye to that in a moment as through they go. There goes Matteo Cairoli. Now, where is he? He is in 17th place in the Racing Line Motorsport Porsche. And it's a very crowded house ahead of him as they dive down towards came once more number three ferrari goes through that is bonito trying to make amends and he gets involved in life like sorello just basically stopped on the e exiting the, the turn there and the jaguar didn't get the traction out and bonito had the traction and just drove straight into the back of him it's not going well for the italian at all he was very much the favorite to take a, a commanding victory here and uh, that's going to be damaged the rear and the front of his ferrari yeah. and he's going to have a lot of work to do now he's 23rd position we've got a drive through for andy suchek um see that was a strange one didn't quite see that one, David, I'm afraid. It was oh. just, the picture broke down. It, there was just so much going on in the first chicane. <laughs> I was trying to work out how Dennis Lynn had made up those positions, but I think he was a beneficiary of what went yes. on just that one lap ago. It wasn't that he'd overtaken. He actually just benefited from everybody else's errors. I think you're right. Yes, they all went one way. He went the other and he, he, yeah. he bought places. Yeah, exactly. So up front, it is still Amir Hosseini that leads... Is right there behind him in second place. Arthur Camera runs third, and there on uh, uh, Andy Suchek with his drive through, and Kirill Pavlovsky also being given a time penalty as well. Wonder whether that time penalty is for the shunt, whether the race direction has deemed him uh, guilty for causing a collision with Enzo Benito. Uh, and therefore that's why he's got that 15 second penalty he's still running there are three cars as you can see that are not Giotto, Lozanov and Murphy out of the race after damage in that crash but Pulaski is still going mm. yeah Lozanov's a shame because he was doing well uh, earlier on in the day wasn't he in the semi-final came good late race there is Arthur Camera who is one of the wild cards in this and right now it's game on for the race lead because to the outside line goes number one Mercedes Nikos so Noyox rather goes to the outside line. Is he going to be able to make a move? Uh, Noyox slots back in behind Hussein. He's trying to attack. He's trying to defend the four Mercedes there. Is Axel Petit as well as they drop down to the second of the chicanes. Real test for the drivers. This isn't it, John. You're trying to attack. You're trying to defend and not make a mistake. And the beneficiary is the fourth place blue Mercedes of Petit. Yeah, it's a bit of a Formula Mercedes event at the front of this field. But still, nevertheless, anybody's race to win. And certainly, but leading it right now, as any is doing, is no guarantee that come what 51 minutes remaining, he will be in that lead position. So keep an eye and see whether they control themselves, which they need to do, because there's no point trying to do something rash now when you've got a long way yet in this race to finish. Dennis Lynn still there in 10th place, not quite on the back of Pfeffer. And actually, Ben, just looking at that, uh, Pfeffer is kind of leading the second wave in ninth place, isn't he? The gap's opened up between eighth and ninth places. Absolutely. So Dennis Lynn should be able to get to the lead of that pretty quickly and then have clear air to get onto the, the leading contenders. White Noble has a little bit of a gap to Petit right now. Two seconds, the gap between those two. As we watch Tanitza now pretty much flying the flag for Ferrari is on his own because uh, his teammate down in 22nd position has got a lot of work to do to get himself back into contention for a podium. 50 minutes still to go. Plenty still to go. Oh, Cabra is under attack for Petit. He is indeed. Yes, very nearly a rear-facing camera there, but Arthur Camera under attack from Petit, who's on the outside line, part one of the chicane, the inside line for part two. Breathe in, chaps. They squeeze through together, but Camera now will have the inside line going into the curve of Grandi. Great battle between the two, and now Petit has got to be really brave. Stand your ground here. That's the inside line for the first part of the next chicane, but the tighter line is the shorter line for Camera. He hangs onto the place, but only just. And here comes Petit. Does he break late enough? He does not. Slots back in behind, and Camera, good defensive driving there, John, hangs on to third place. Well, good driving on part of both drivers because there's a challenge coming from Petit in fourth place and he was almost almost at the point he thought well if I let the car roll into the chicane I might be able to get track position take third place away but he sensibly bailed out of it and let camera maintain that third position so it's still you have 50 odd minutes just under 50 minutes remaining there's you know, you're a long long way to go don't show all your strengths 
quite yet. But nevertheless, this battle amongst the former cities of the lead is pretty much what it's going to be, I think, for the rest of the race. Now, Pfeffer has picked up a drive-through penalty. The yellow Mercedes place has got a drive-through. Ben, what do we know about that, if anything? Is that for track limits? It's the graphic said it was for track limits, so that right. will be an automatic penalty. Now the race directors, the human race directors, will look at it to see uh, whether it really is applicable before, and they can change that if they need to. So uh, for the okay. moment, though, that takes him out of the top 10, which would be a big disaster. We also had a yellow flag a little bit earlier on whilst John was talking, and that was Michael O'Brien who went for a, a loop, and he's now down in 25th position. OK, so over the timing line there is uh, Danilo Santoro chasing after Dennis Lind. So Dennis Lind is the best of the pros, the real world drivers in 10th place. Santoro going with him ahead of Kreuzer, Lucas Kreuzer in the next of the fleet of Mercedes down in 12th place. Uh, Hosseini still leads the way, but only just 10 to the second. Nothing at all with still eight minutes on the clock. So still wide open this race, isn't it? Absolutely. And another drive through penalty for car 33 just popping up onto our timing screens. I think that's a little bit further down the order. Yeah, Gasho. Uh, sorry, Gatsuto even in 27th position. Uh, yeah, so he will take that as well. Stefano Gattuso, another graduate of the challenge. He's one of real world pro drivers. So uh, he's copped for a penalty, as is Andy Suchek from earlier on. From the recovering Enzo Benito. So he won the last race, semi final two, after contact repeatedly early on. He's way, way back in 20th with work to do here. Good line out of the chicane. Rizzoli loses out, Bonito up the inside. And in all of this, look, you've got Tosato coming under attack from David Tonitza. Tonitza, the man that won the first race, trying to find a way through on the outside line, but can't do it. Now, where, John, might this Ferrari be able to make the move? It's good through the air, but of course, the Mercedes has the grunt in a straight line. David, I'm afraid I've got a frozen screen. I can't see anything other than coming ah. into second chicane so go ahead with uh, ben apologies right so down towards the parabolica they come now uh, 187 mercedes this is pfeffer he's still damocletian drive through hanging over him but he's not yet served it he's actually caught up to the pack ahead is he in this time yes he is ben so the yellow mercedes in the round takes the penalty that so uh, relieves a bit of pressure from Tanitza, who is desperately mm. focused on trying to get past Tozato, uh, but had the Mercedes behind him, kind of causing a bit of problems. Now tries to go to the outside at the turn one, but uh, not the place to do it quite yet. And it is so tricky. It's more tricky for Benito actually trying to get through the pack because it's, effect it's a, a bit like driving, you know, as a pro in an AM field, and you're not quite so sure what the drivers around you were doing uh, that in effect is what benito is as a pro and the pro real drivers are kind of ams in this situation he's having to be quite tentative about how to get through some of these drivers he's got pan compact just ahead of him uh, as the next driver but uh, tonitsa at least should know what tozato uh, the kind of character tozato is there's a big slide from tozato and that should be easy pickings around the outside at lesmo too so tonitsa gains a place dennis lind is catching up as behind them in ninth in the Lamborghini. So one up for the Ferrari, one down for the Mercedes of Tosato, and Dennis Lynn chipping his way closer and closer into contention now. A bit earlier on, when you see that arm coming off the steering wheel, uh, that is because he's making an adjustment either to the traction control or perhaps to the mapping or maybe even to the brake bias. That isn't a glitch that was being speculated earlier on. That is indeed, I think, probably brake bias with where the arm is going down on the right-hand side there. Uh, so constant changes going on inside the car. You can see what map he's uh, running on, and he's not got a lot of trash control on in that car either. No, you're right. Up towards the end of a lap they come then. On map one here, as you ride on board. Now, Ben, explain again the different engine maps and what that means. Generally, most of the drivers will be running on map one for, the, for most of the race because that is the most uh, efficient and the fastest way uh, to get the most performance out of the engine. But the Mercedes can't run a full one hour stint on map one. And even on map two, which is a slightly more efficient for the fuel map, uh, they still need to do a little bit of lifting and coasting. So Ferrari, Lamborghini shouldn't be a problem. Mercedes do have this uh, crucial issue uh, with not being able to run at their fastest and most efficient um, all the way through the race. 
And there, Dennis Lynn with his elbows out, tries to go around the outside. Contact between him and Tozato. That's going to give Danilo Santoro a chance to challenge on the inside. So Dennis Lynn ends up in contact, loses another place, and we'll wait and see what comes out of all of that. I would have thought there's going to be a penalty for that because it definitely penalised the Mercedes that was pushed off the track and the exit of the second chicane. So I would assume that everybody will have a look at it and uh, review it and no doubt a penalty will come. OK, Simon Gachet has just gone through. He's in 15th place. There are the race leaders still together, aren't they? So Hosseini keeping uh, Nils Noyops at bay, the gap three tenths of a second. And don't forget that Hosseini dominated. He didn't win it, but he led for more laps than anybody else. Semi-final one, but desperately low on fuel at the end. Well, here he is trying to pull away, but he's still leading and he's still having to be the one to punch the hole through the air all the time. Has he not learnt? <laughs> <laughs> Wait and see. 43 minutes time will know. To be fair, the well, pace that he's running is not very good. Place, Zenians are in second place. Uh, he's going to benefit from having fractionally less fuel usage simply because he's just sitting in the slipstream of the leading Mercedes and that will give him marginal benefit probably towards the very last lap, maybe two laps from the end. I think you're right, John. I think uh, Noyok's number one is doing a very canny thing of sitting there, biding his time. He knows he's got the pace to run with Hosseini, but he can just sit there, save a little bit of fuel. And as long as he doesn't come under attack from Martha or Camera, that said, we saw it in the first race, Ben, didn't we? Camera was very savvy at saving fuel early on, pushed late in the race. So he might well turn out to be one to watch in the second half. Uh, the lap times are not that strong at the moment. Uh, Hosseini running a 49-0. His best is a 48-2. Uh, so he's certainly not running at the pace that he could ultimately run in. Uh, looking further down, uh, the second of the Lamborghinis, uh, Tiziano Brioni, running a 48-4 that last lap. Uh, that's much more the kind of pace, lap per lap, that they should be able to do. So I would say Husseini is saving a little bit of fuel right now. Mm. Looks like it, doesn't it? It's not quite the energetic drive that we saw in the first race. Right. Now, what about Dennis Lynn? He's in eighth place and he's the best of the pros and he's not that far back. It's still 42 minutes to go. He can make up a bit more ground before the end, I would have thought, can't he? He doesn't have to worry about saving tyres, he doesn't have to worry about saving fuel, he can just go all out attack. Here's uh, Gasho under pressure from Franke, Franke down the inside and that was a nice easy move. Yeah, Simon sure Gasho. He wasn't in the Vodafone car uh, before, was he? No, that was Hussaini, but uh, anyway keep us on our toes. And Simon Gasho who has been an Audi driver in the real world of GT World Challenge Europe for a couple of seasons, uh, getting better and better all the time now adapting to sim racing. As the leaders go by, there's Arthur Camera keeping Mike Nobel behind him. So that the Lamborghini fourth, then the first one really to break all that domination from the Mercedes. Number 71, Tiziano Brioni, they're running in sixth place. Best of the what you might call orange one liveried Lamborghinis ahead of Dennis Lynn. But of course, it's the Ombra car of Mike Nobel in fourth place. And uh, Enzo Benito trying to make up another position getting himself up past Gachet on the outside, turns to the inside, and uh, it's actually so nice to see so much respect between these guys, leaving each other room going through these chicanes. Even in the real world, they're not this respectful. Uh, it's uh, lovely to see, because you know so, so much of that perception. Oh, Hosseini has had a connection issue. Hosseini's out of the race. Just seeing so on my timing screen. The man that was leading, no more. So that's going to put Niels Noyox up front. The order will shuffle accordingly. Hosseini is shown as being in the pit lane. So Amir Hosseini, who was leading, if it's a connection issue, that is very, very unfortunate indeed. Camera goes second. Nobel goes third. Petit here goes fourth. Brioni will go fifth. Tonitsa up to sixth. And high drama then for Amir Hosseini out of the race with this connection issue. Simply disappeared from the track and ended up in the pit lane. Didn't drive into the pits and, and therefore... Uh, assuming that it was a connection issue and nothing else but that is such a shame and it's left Niels Noyox in the lead by 2.3 seconds and now he's going to have to start thinking what he's going to do for strategy wise because he is now punching that big uh, mm. Mercedes front end through the air and he's going to be consuming a lot more fuel than he was the last couple of laps. 
And Arfield Camera is in fresh air with no one to follow. He's punching his own hole. He's got Mike Nobel right there behind him as they drop down towards turn one. Mike Nobel slots in behind. Uh, before all the drama happened with Hosseini, I was about to talk to John about driving standards. Ben was making the point about the respect being shown. And John, it is impressive. We're not having too much contact. Now the race has settled down. No, the, 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 in terms of car upon car, it's been relatively clean. But what I've noticed is that in some corners, one of the a couple of laps ago, three laps ago, a pass was made out of the exit of Lesmo 1, simply because I think it was a Ferrari, but so far wide on the exit, it was, he had gained, I would have said, significant exit speed to make the pass before he got to Lesmo 2. So a lot of excessive track limit abuse, but everybody's doing it. So I think that there's no real, oh, not one example I can cite. Um, that's pretty much what the race is going to be about. Absolutely. So up front, it remains Mercedes, but now number one, uh, Nils Noyox, it is, who holds sway. So don't forget, he had a spin in the earlier race and dropped back down the order. So right now, as you look at the second and third place fight, Mike Nobel on the back here of Arthur wow. Kammerer. <laughs> Off the road he goes, back on he goes. What were we saying about driving standards? Well, there was no there was track limit abuse or just simply a simple dropout. I don't know which of the two it was. But the bottom line is, it lost him maybe two seconds, second and a half to the Mercedes that he was following, looking to put a challenge on the Mercedes, and now that's gone. And that's Andre Franca, who is in 14th place ahead of Enzo Benito, the semi-final two winner, who's had a real yo-yo race up and down the order. Trouble is, even though he's trying to creep back up the order, he's running out of time in order to do this, and the gaps are opening up ahead of him. So the McLaren here looking fleet of foot down to the Parabolica. Franca turns through. But up front, Niels Noyox, Niels Noyox rather, now trying to build this gap over Arthur Camera, And it's working for him, Ben, because, of course, Camera is busy defending from Nobel. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, quite difficult to defend coming down this uh, front straight. Almost uh, you lose too much time defending. You might as well let him go and then get settled back into your rhythm. Uh, just trying to decipher what happened to Husseini. He's come onto the chat and said, please check replay. There's a couple of guys in our YouTube chat who obviously are watching this race um, in the back end of ACC. So you can actually rewind and, re and fast forward various parts of the race. Okay. And, uh, implying that perhaps there was more to it than simply a connection issue. Well, here is a place gained because that was Enzo Benito going through on the inside, putting himself up past Andre Franca. We'll try and get to the bottom of Amir Hosseini's issues if we can before the end of the race. 36 and a half minutes just over, still to run as Mike Nobel goes through. He's been caught by Axel Petit. Then you've got uh, Tiziano Brioni's Lamborghini in fifth. David Tonitsa, the semi-final one winner, up into sixth place. And remember, those Ferraris get stronger in the second part of the race. So I don't think we should rule out Tonitsa just yet, should we? Oh, now Yox has got a penalty. So there was obviously contact between him and Husseini. And we've got 15 second penalty for Nils Naujok. So that drops him, I think, outside even the top 10 positions. Shame we haven't been able to see that. But uh, somebody was uh, implying that on YouTube, that there was contact. I didn't want to say it, but obviously Race Control have seen it and they've decided to penalise Nils Naujok. OK, so now it all starts to fit together. We'll try and fish out the replay if we can, as they're going through his petite number 996. Uh, we'll have a look at it at the end of the race, if we can, as over the line there goes Enzo Bonito. So we're not done yet. So Arthur Camera versus Mike Nobel. That effectively becomes the lead battle. There is Bonito heading down towards the first chicane, being chased by Andre Franca. But of course, we've had the reversal of the place between those two, with the Ferrari going ahead on that previous lap. Dennis Lind, seventh on the road, but sixth in corrected times if you give the penalty to uh, Noyox. And there, whoops, is Andrea Rizzoli who's facing the wrong way. But Dennis Lind, as I was about to suggest, getting more and more competitive as this race wears on. And uh, Lind, although he's got, obviously got the red uh, number for being a real world driver, racing uh, Lamborghinis, amongst other things, he is of also a very experienced sim racer as well. So perhaps slightly misleading to have him as a, as a, uh, a real driver, although of course he's here because he is a real driver uh, in the World Challenge. And 
not that much experience really as we spoke to him at the start mm. of the program on a set of courses so he's still adapting to this but perhaps not quite to the level of our real pro a set of courses guys who will spend hundreds and hundreds of hours now there you can ride on board with david peral you can see in the little TV mirror, because of course increasingly GT cars don't have an internal mirror, they have the video of uh, the car of Samuel Ratz, the Ferrari behind him as Perel rattles over the kerb. And there, Ratz even wider, and that's going to give the yellow Ferrari a chance to challenge John on the way down to the Parabolica. Yeah, I mean, it just it seems like strange that you can get so far off the racetrack and then make up a position in the process, but contact in Parabolica, David Perel, whether he wasn't aware the Ferrari was alongside him. And he has come off the worst because he's going to be under threat from the Lamborghini, the 999 Lamborghini that was directly behind. Now going to be absolutely side by side as they come across start finish line. So Chris Hooker is in the Lamborghini as they go by down towards the first of the chicanes. But for David Perel, he's lost one place and he might lose another here as they get themselves down towards the chicane. Perel hangs onto the place, but only just. our attention now to Petit up in fourth position and uh, 1.3 seconds off the, miss the Lamborghini of Nobel in third he's really found himself in a great position with all these guys around him it's uh, actually virtually second position isn't it because uh, now Yox there's no way that now Yox is going to be able to pull out a 15 second advantage to get himself uh, to stay in that first position so uh, doing the maths he slots in I reckon around ninth tenth position right now uh, the other man to watch out for is Tonitza in the Ferrari. We know that that Ferrari can keep up the pace and he's done a 48.3 the last lap through. So he's pretty much on pace with his ultimate pace, lap after lap. And he's got the Lamborghini of Brioni just ahead of him. And he'll be that'll be the next target. And I'm pretty sure that's going to happen perhaps even into turn one next time through. So Dennis Lynn goes by still seventh now he's got a bit of work to do hasn't he before he can get on to terms with Tonitza, the semi-final one winner goes through now accelerates towards the curva grandi once more but up front it's in real terms arthur camera only three tenths of a second ahead of Mike Nobel. That's where the real lead battle is going to come. Uh, as far as Niels Noyox is concerned, he's going to try and push like crazy here to build up 15.1 seconds in order to hang on to the race lead. And that's exactly what he's done. He's gone the ultimate fastest lap that he's ever been able to do so far on lap 15 of the race. There's no way that he's in fuel saving mode. I. I know Nils a little bit. I've uh, been in the same room with him a couple of times and he's the kind of person who will do an all or nothing. So I reckon he's turned that map up to one and he is trying to set a frenetic pace that, to be honest, it will destroy every other Mercedes if they try and match him. Here he is on board. He's actually on map two, but the pace is pretty damn good. The big problem is, Ben, of course, he's got to make up time 15 seconds over a 31 minute remaining time of this race. And it's a very big ask, and I doubt he can manage it, even though he's got clear air and he's going to be utterly possessed, as he will need to be. But that's going to be more than it's capable. I think the machinery and the driver have been involved in an incident, and that's the penalty he's had to take. Last lap through then of 48.6. Arthur Camera a 48.2. That's nearly the fastest lap of the race. Mike Nobel of 48.3. This pace is so much faster than we've seen in this kind of conditions uh, compared to semi-final one and semi-final two. Tanitza having a great view here of Brioni trying to get past Petit for fourth position. And Tanitza now right on the tail of this battle. That Ferrari is coming into its own. Absolutely, because we're virtually at the halfway point, aren't we now? So this is where the Ferraris come on strong. Uh, I've just seen, and we'll be able to broadcast it to you all at the end, some vision of the contact between those two Mercedes from early on. It wasn't a big hit, but it has serious consequences. Noyox got into the back of Hosseini at a fast part of the circuit, so the uh, penalty comes accordingly, and Noyox trying now to break away. But to pull out more than 15 seconds is a real ask, especially when we know the Mercedes have to think about fuel late in the race. There, number 71 is Brioni against Tonitza, and Tonitza still can't yet find a way by. 
clearly Kalinic was quicker around the circuit. He's just found himself in a situation, as is often the case at Monza. You can be quicker in the lap, but you can't find a way past a slower car. So he's going to have to think it out. Up into the Iscari chicane, he can have a thought about it. He ha he's thinking about it, but hasn't got the position or quite the pace. So we start the clock and then think about it down into Parabolica, get a quick, good exit out of the Ascari, a better exit this time than Brioni had in the Lamborghini, but the Lamborghini still able, got better straight line speed at this park than we're seeing from the Ferrari. Now, these Ferraris, as we've been saying, come good as the race wears on. Look at the gaps. It's not totally out of the question that Tonitza could get himself into the top three by the very end and allowing for battles, maybe even better than that. Let's see, he comes across the timing line, but first to sixth, not a huge gap anymore. As you see there, the Emil Frey Jaguar of Chirello with Kirill Lakovsky behind. Sorry, Cody Lakovsky behind, forgive me, the gold medalist from the Motorsport Games. He's in 19th place ahead of Sam Ratz. David Peral comes next in the green Ferrari, trying to play catch up. So Cody Lakovsky to the outside line into the Parabolica, but it doesn't work for him. And Cirello's got a, fifth, a five second penalty for track limits as well. So he's not even really battling with these guys and uh, causing himself a bit of a nuisance really for the Ferrari and the Mercedes. Now Rat's looking to the inside line, perhaps to try and go down the inside at turn one, but uh, needs a bit more slipstream, I think. Gets back behind under the rear wing of that Mercedes. It spits fire as it breaks into turn one. And they all settle down into position. But as you say, Cirello with a five second penalty, he's actually virtually about 22nd, 23rd right now, and not in the position that he's in. He wants to defend, of course, but he is getting in the way, rather. As you say, in corrected times, he will drop behind them. Uh, somebody else with a 15-second penalty from earlier on, the McLaren of Capaccia, who is in 13th on the road. Now, there is Axel Petit going towards us. He is being chased still by Tiziana Brioni. And then David Tonitza in sixth place. So Tonitza creeping up, look onto the back of the Lamborghini. There is the real race leader, Arthur Camera, ahead of Nobel. So take Noyox out of the equation. And on the road, second to sixth, which are really first to fifth, they're not covered by too much at all, are they? Fantastic racing. And again, even if you look down to 22nd and 23rd position, David Perel has uh, got lots of attention from... Uh, Chris Hoek, and it's great to see these real-world drivers mixing it with virtual drivers. All oh, big slide from Lozio there in the Mercedes, second of those two Mercedes, and uh, he would have lost a second or two with that uh, over-enthusiastic right foot. Absolutely. There is Tonitza over the timing line into the first chicane, so Tonitza is still sixth, but he's only four tenths off the Lamborghini. Now, John, you've got two cars there, Lamborghini and Ferrari, both similar in terms of being aero friendly around Monza. So it's going to be hard for Tonitza to gain a place here, I would have thought. I still maintain the Ferrari of all the cars we're looking at is the quickest car in a single lap of this group. But unfortunately, it's the problem you always have at Monza. You get in a position and it's very hard to make further progress. And the further Tonitza has gone up through the field, the more difficult it's going to become to make passes. And one thing is for sure, but the only in the Lamborghini or Petit in the Mercedes running in fourth place, they're not about to step aside. No. So all that Tonetti can hope for is that traffic, maybe they come up to that, some of the slower cars, creates the opportunity. But in terms of being able to use his potential lap time, not going to be easy. It's a good point, that, about the back markers. Uh, Ben's looking more closely at timing screens. Now, we did have Lapri, of course, in the semi-finals, Ben. But now you take your fastest 20 out of those two races in other words there aren't really any slow people anymore are there <laughs> exactly we um we've uh, and actually we're missing six drivers already that are, are out of this race uh, stefano gatsuto's just gone into pits as well i think he may be a retirement too so that would be seven retirements uh, and uh, other than that everyone's really on the same the same pace as the rest so uh Pulowski is the last of our drivers he's circulating nearly a minute off the back of the, the, the closest contender. So he could be the one person that might be lapped. But I reckon the rest of them might get away with it. So in other words, if you're hoping that the traffic gives you an advantage, you might have to think again because you might not catch any, if much traffic at all. So we've got 25 minutes of the race to go. We've still got the race leader on the road with this penalty. We've got an effort being made here. Look on the inside as Cody Lakovsky comes up to have a go at Chirello in the Emil Frey Jaguar and tries to keep Samuel Ratz at bay as they come out of the Parabolica. 
And the Jaguar hangs on in there for now. The Jaguars, again, as it's shown all last year, genuinely good straight line performance, which again is a frustration for the Mercedes and the Ferrari that are following. But the Ferrari tries to duck out as they come down. Again, you see, even having the draft, he gets out into the clean air and it stalls out. But look at the questions on our YouTube. Oh, sorry. Go for it, Ben. Go for it. And we had a couple of questions on YouTube about the um, about the little yellow markers beside the drivers' names on our timing screens uh, and what they mean. Uh, and you can see Brian Heidkotter's uh, yellow marker is much larger than most of the rest of them around. And that is showing the performance of the internet that, and their connection. And we just saw a few moments ago uh, that uh, Nils Nayok's had a big problem with his internet. That line got so big that it nearly touched the top. If it completes it will knock you out of the race. It means your internet connection is not good enough to participate in the race. And uh, Malyox has just about avoided being knocked out of the race by his internet. So on top of everything else, other drivers around you, cars, curbs, tires, there's the internet connection to factor into all of this as well. It's a different and world, David, isn't it? David, is the driver aware of that fact while he's driving or not? He'll see that he'll see that his connection is perhaps faltering, but there's nothing that he can do about it unless you can shout to his wife or his daughter or his girlfriend to stop watching Netflix. <laughs> First world problems. So uh, Brian Heitkotter then down in 23rd, internet permitting, and uh, David Perel going ahead of Samuel Ratt. So that puts him now up into 20th spot down to the Parabolica. How is Tonitza getting on? He's got past Brioni, so he's up into fifth on the road. He's up to fourth on corrected times. He's, he's getting that job. Nice yeah, no, it is. I mean, it, to get past the Lamborghini was no easy task because that V10 on the Lamborghini has got very good straight line performance. The Ferrari, I mean, it's, it's as slippery as anything else that's out there, but it's about just making the best use of what you can get. And to get that one pass, 22 minutes remaining, the Mercedes, bigger car, punching a bigger hole. So I would expect to see the Ferrari close down the teat, maybe in the next lap or two. And another great battle going on here, Ben, with yet more variety from the grid. The Perel, Rats, uh, side by side. Lukowski's in there as well. Lukowski in the grey Mercedes on the outside. There are four cars get, trying to get into the chicane at the same time. There is contact. Perel goes round. That's such a shame for Debbie Perel. Lukowski, Rats, and Hooker all benefit from that. I think even the Nissan of Brian Heidkotter. We haven't seen. He's the only one running a Nissan. Uh, which is uh, kind of him for Nissan, um, <laughs> and he gets through as well. There are some cars that are better than others around here, and that's why we don't see any Audis running uh, in this particular competition, because they just don't get on well with Monza as a surfer. No, Audi wins here have been few and far between, as over the timing line then go the race leaders once more, on board with Axel Petit, who is fourth on the road. He's third on corrected times. He lines up to have a go at Mike Nobel, who, while we've been away watching other things, has dropped back quite a lot, hasn't he, from off the camera? Nobel, Petit, and he's got Tanitza just behind him. Obviously, we can't see that right now, but uh, Tanitza is right there in the Ferrari and Brioni too. So here's four for what is third position right now, but will probably become uh, second position. And actually, camera is catching now, Yacht. So uh, yeah. Nils perhaps has uh, used the best of his tyres, although his last lap was a... Uh, a 40, oh, his last lap was a 48-2, so it was his best lap ever, Nils Nalyok. So uh, something happened a couple of laps ago, and uh, actually Nils has stretched the advantage to camera through this last sector. But well, didn't we battle for a third place is going on. Keep an eye on Nitsa because he's just sitting, waiting, watching. As the Lamborghini and the Mercedes C saw the gap between third and fourth place, look how close the Ferraris yeah. closed up on that last lap alone. Now almost under the rear wing of the Mercedes, coming up to the Ascari. The Mercedes going defensive. Can Ferrari dive down the inside? No, he's done the right thing and waited. Get your opportunity, possibly, on the run down into Parabolica. Good point. Certainly, David Tonitza is there, but he's also, in turn, got Brioni, Tiziano Brioni in the Lamborghini behind him. So he's trying to attack. He's still got to defend. Just going back to the Mercedes, we saw this from Camera in the first semi-final, didn't we? He was relaxed, if you like, in his pace early on, but was then very strong in the second part. Maybe that also is why he's been able to bring that gap down to a second and a half on the road to Moyox. But of course, he inherits the lead anyway. He doesn't have to push anymore. Oh, I wonder whether he knows that, though. 
Uh, he point. may not have any information as to, to the, uh, the situation in Now Yorks. We obviously can see everybody, but they don't necessarily have those, uh, that information, that t the timing information. So he may still be pushing on unless somebody's told him about it. And he had a very good last lap, a 48-3, which uh, his very far first fastest lap so far in this race. Uh, so the pace is still frenetic at the front and it was actually Mike Nobel who made the, the biggest error of our leading group. He was half a second slower than his best lap and he has the best lap of the race so far of 47.9. So this battle here is for second, third, fourth and fifth on corrected times. So Tonitza is not far away from being on the podium, but if he can get past Petit, he's got a real chance of getting through this traffic. The longer he gets mired here, he's still got 19 minutes to go, but the longer he gets mired here, the further away camera can pull. So no, we need to get down. down in 13th position now. So 4.4 seconds behind Simonini. Bit of clear air, putting in some fast laps from Enzo, but he's definitely got a car that's slightly damaged in comparison to uh, what he would have had at the start. And uh, Enzo is going to do have a really big push to maybe get into the top 10, but it's going to be tough for him. BMW versus Mercedes as well here as Andrea Rizzoli tries to get up the inside of Merchant Solak and two big grunty cars, but I think the Mercedes ought to have the advantage. Let's see, he's put himself on the wrong line though for the chicane, so Solak should go back ahead and he does so on the inside line. Yeah, he had a little bit more speed, exit speed out of the Curva Grande. Remember that twin turbocharged T8 engine in the, in the BMW has always been very, very strong in a straight line and that was a case where the defence was relatively easy for the BMW. So now Rizzoli under attack from David Perel, is he not? As he comes through, wide out of the Lesmo curves. But Perel is, uh, is getting himself back up and running after having that half spin at yeah. the second chicane. And after his earlier drive through, Tobias Pfeffer down in 23rd with a lot of work still to do. Dennis Lind has kind of plateaued, hasn't he as well? He's still there in seventh place, but not making much more progress as now Petit for fourth on the road. He's under attack from Tunitsa. 17 and three quarter minutes to go and this is all building up nicely uh, Dennis Lind has got a, a bit of a gap you could choose just see him at the very tail of the picture there he's got space but obviously the pace at the front is so hot so hot so much hotter than we saw in the two semi-finals that he just simply can't uh, close the gap he needs these guys to start swapping positions that will then bring him into this fight and this petite, could be the moment uh, yeah petite just looking slightly wide on the exit of Lesmo mm. 1, that's allowing the Ferrari to get back up under the rear wing as the exit of Lesmo 2 can't get an awful lot closer. If he does, it's going to have actually a detrimental effect, so waiting to see the Ferrari goes to the right as they come down into the braking zone, but that's been covered by Petit and the Mercedes, so the O bounces it across the cover aggressively, the front of the Mercedes up in the air, and the Ferrari again looking the more comfortable of the two cars exiting out of Ascari. So Tonitza breathing down the neck of the Mercedes of Axel Petit, but he's also feeling the pressure from behind because right there behind him is Tiziano Brioni and the Lamborghini as they come through the Parabolica. Now Tonitza knows the clock is ticking down. He knows he's close to making a move against the Mercedes and the move starts here coming off the Parabolica. He needs to stay in that draft if he can all the way past the pits. Let's see whether the gap comes down. It should do. It starts to creep down and down and down. Tonitza ready to make a move down towards the chicane. Is this where he makes the move? He has a long, long look, but I don't think he's going to be close enough as they hit the anchors. No, got to slot back in behind. No, he couldn't do it. He was quicker in the entry into Parabolica and mid-corner was quicker. But once the Mercedes got the corner relaxing and easing out, then the speed that it has pulled it away initially. Then it started to close. So now Tonitza thinks about the move. This is the inside line up towards the Variante della Roggia. Well, Petit's doing a good job of defending here. Hangs onto the place. And it's uh, allowing Mike Nobel a little bit of breathing space too. Mm. 1.3 seconds now, the gap between those two uh, in effectively second position. Nobel was at the front of this little queue, but as Petit started to defend, it has allowed Nobel a bit of breathing space and it is bringing Dennis Lind into it. The gap is seesawing around two to two and a half seconds and Dennis Lind, I think, uh, hopefully by 50 minutes remaining, he should be able to get into this little fight by the end of the race. Uh, just wondering as well, Ben, whether now that he's no longer having to defend from Petit, Nobel can catch up to camera. The gap's coming down, isn't it? From two seconds to 1.8. So 
second and third on the road on corrected times for the race lead, Nobel is closing on camera with just under 15 minutes to go. And that's important stuff. Well, and we're seeing fastest laps from Nils Naujok still. He's still pushing this pace incredibly hard. I think he may even run out of fuel at the end of this race, knowing that he's got that penalty. He's just trying to disrupt the race by dragging Arthur Camera into these fast laps. Mike Nobel is running faster, as you say, a 40, uh, 48 5 plays a 48 1 that last lap through. Nobel taking another four tenths of a second out of Camera. Uh, but I think now York is playing some crazy game here because he is he's done another fastest lap of the race. He is now the fastest lap man out on circuit in a Mercedes with only 14 minutes remaining. This is when they're supposed to be going off. And here, John, you've got Ferrari versus Lamborghini. It almost got a bit physical. Yeah, but Baroni nearly, nearly got that power stung. I mean, he had been overtaken a number of laps ago by the Ferrari and now coming back. And again, you can see it seemingly getting better drive off the first chicane getting up alongside but on the outside as it comes down to the second chicane so no real opportunity to make a pass without putting both cars at jeopardy so maybe the best of the ferrari has now been run because look how far he's dropped back from the the tail of petite and fourth on what is actually in reality going to be third place so either tonitzi has got a problem or he's just resetting having made a small error of driving and he's got to do it all over again, but he's got the pressure of the Lamborghini now real and for, it's absolutely 100%. So he has to try and fend off that Lamborghini. As you say, Axel Petit gets away then in the Mercedes. Camera to Nobel, that gap's coming down, 1.6 seconds. Uh, ben, tell me about penalties. There's 15 seconds that's applied to uh, Noyox. Can he argue about that post-race? Could it be taken away or is that there and it stays there now? Well, that has been implemented by the human race direction. Yeah, it's not been implemented by an automatic computer system, which some of the, uh, the penalties applied for running uh, over the chicane and track limits, they're automatic, but that's a, a manual penalty. So it can be taken away um, and it, it could be reinstated. And, and looking at the replays, it's very difficult to say exactly what happened um, and whose fault was it, but race control have made a point of giving it to him now so i don't think we'll see that change mm. perhaps a change though here for fifth position uh to having to go on the defensive now he is yeah i mean he's got this lamborghini and brioni crawling all over the back of him and as john was saying that's released axel petit up the road 12 more minutes are on the clock you're right about noyox still pounding around he's stretching that margin again over camera who is being caught by Nobel, and here comes Brioni to try and make his move, John, against the Ferrari. Yeah, again, he's, doing, he's done the undercut dive down the inside. It's a brave move. There's going to be oh. contact, and there is, and the Lamborghini is the one that comes off in many respects, one would say rightly, but he had the opportunity, just couldn't slow the car down enough, made the contact with the 95 Ferrari. So Tonitsi and I will continue in fifth place, but he won't have any pressure, and he can maybe think, well, now I've got that out of the way. Can I do anything with what is fourth on the road, but in reality will be third overall, that of Petit and the Mercedes. Well, the bite a bit there, wasn't it? Brioni made the move, and that's going to put Dennis Lind into the top six. How much nine. of that did it damage the Ferrari as well? It was quite a heavy wheel-to-wheel -wheel hit. Could have damaged the suspension, certainly the tracking and the steering. Uh, that could be out. That will jeopardise top speed going down these long straights uh, and also front tyre wear as well. So you'll have ben, to be super ben. careful. Ben, if it's that bad, the car will be in the hedge. <laughs> well... It's not quite to, uh, it's not quite fully simulation in terms of uh, when it comes to damage and stuff like that but we wow, do good bit of motor racing coming through the Ascari well. right now mercedes and is that the mclaren anyway uh, the, the the winner out of that ironically was tonitzi because although there was heavy contact on the left hand side of the car it was a bit like a snooker ball contact but it didn't have the the, the weight of contact he was able to keep the car running so I suspect maybe the damage, if it's anything, it'll be more than nothing more than marginal. We've lost to Bias Pfeiffer. He's now out of the race, unfortunately, and retired. Uh, and he was uh, recovering after a penalty early doors. Samuel Ratz and uh, Cody Lukowski had a coming together about a lap ago. They lost 15 seconds. And this is a great fight here. Capoccia, both of these guys actually have track limit uh, problems. Kreutzer and Capoccia, and Capoccia up into 12. Although he's not, because he's got a 15 seconds penalty. 
Yes, for now. Um, <laughs> I still wonder whether there's going to be any discussion about this post-race. But anyway, we'll see. So we'll call it as we see it. And the gap that Noyox is building over camera, well, yeah, your fuel for about him running dry might well come into play yet because with 10 minutes to go, he's not out of the woods. He's done no saving that we know of, has he? He's been really pounding around. 48-0 was his last lap time, which is a tenth slower than his very best lap time. This is no way fuel saving in any shape or form. So perhaps this is just throwing everything to the wind and showing who is the quickest around here. Now, battle's going on lower down also. Uh, Capaccio's got a penalty in the McLaren. Kreutz has got a penalty in the Mercedes. And then 14th on the road is Enzo Benito, the man that, of course, came out on top of the second semi-final not, not an hour ago. Benito is certainly nursing a damaged Ferrari as well. Oh, yeah. is that Dennis Lind off the road? Or is oh, that the white Briani? flag? The white flag indicating a slow car on the circuit. So whether that's coming down into Parabolica or whether it's elsewhere, but we can see the two Lamborghinis as they enter the Parabolica. And I think one of that those two cars was the car that was getting away. The white flag waved at it. I think it was Brioni, wasn't Lind it? Lind has lost 15 seconds on that last lap, and he's dropping down the timing screen out of the top 10. Okay, but, so Bri mistake there. but Brioni has dropped back as well, hasn't he? Number 71. So both of them are in strife. So it's not over till it's over. Eight and a half minutes to go. Uh, yeah, right. Remember, uh, Brioni was involved in that incident at the second chicane, so that's maybe why he's dropped back. True enough. Yes, that's right. Because he had that spin against the Ferrari, didn't he? Yes, thank well, you, he John. Had the contact, so, yeah, no yeah, enough. yeah. Correct. So Dennis Lind with a drama falls back behind him. What else is going to shake out of all of this before the very end? These two Mercedes could get into one another, couldn't they? Tosato is just ahead at the moment, but only just ahead at the moment. Santoro behind. Santoro, we saw him with a massive drift, I think, a couple of laps ago. Was it uh, Lossio, perhaps? The, they're all this, exactly the same colour. Uh, but uh, there has been a bit of lurid driving between these three Mercedes uh, as they keep pushing, uh, obviously running as the same team and they're importing their virtual racing liveries onto these Mercedes cars. Both well, they're, the John Alexi a, thing. they're just having a, 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 a major war between each of the two cars and the team, and as they come up into the Ascari chicane, who's going to concede? Because neither's prepared to. Tosato stays ahead, Santoro behind him, but only just behind him. These are all the John Alexi team, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the uh, Alexi squad. How appropriate. Right. So the, third of the, uh, the, the third of the drivers we're not seeing at the moment, Lozio, uh, there he is just there, just 14 years of age, so definitely one of the youngest of our drivers, uh, but already finding serious pace on a set of competition. It's very impressive, isn't it? Seven minutes still to go, so four more laps at the end of this one, if that. There is Axel Petit, fourth on the road, and coming Ferrari's, under attack. Yeah. Ferrari is beginning to close back down, David. It's lost right. about two and a half, three seconds, about four laps ago. Bit by bit, it's suddenly found a bit more pace and clawing back. But it's all probably too little too late. So through they turn, there is Petit and Tonitsa. Yeah, he is closing, but I think you're right, John. Too little, too late. Six and a half minutes to go. He's got to catch him. Then you've got to find a way through. Meantime, Tozato versus Santoro through the second of the chicanes. The Jean Alesi Mercedes, of course, Jean drove for Mercedes in the DTM for a time, but uh, in GT terms, these two AMG GT3s are sixth and seventh on the road. Good looking, good looking cars. Now, five seconds ahead of camera, so still putting down the lap times, waiting for him to run out of fuel. Must, must happen. But again, best lap of the race from now Yox on that last lap. Uh, in other news, my cake has arrived, Ben, and... I can hear the, it. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, I might get to it if, if, if things calm down, but um, five and a half minutes, give or take. Looks jolly nice. And up towards the timing line goes number one, Niels Noyox. Then you ride on board with him. So drivers were warned by the race director about making contact with other cars. It might seem a, a stiff penalty, but the penalty has been applied and he's not going to be able to drive around 15 seconds, is he? Look at the right hand side of the screen, map one in the Mercedes, TC2, ABS2. He is going for broke. Now, somewhere on here is fuel, but I can't see it at the moment. Uh, perhaps uh, they've removed that off. Um, 
the, the graphics, but either way, he is on map one as we thought he might be, and therefore he's pushing for fastest laps. And at some point, it's going to run out. The last lap was his best, 47.877 up on the top left-hand side of the screen. Well, if it hadn't been a little bit and eager and getting to the back of the leader, this could well have been his race in merit. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that 15-second penalty is going to be irretrievable. As, well, are these two Mercedes, that's not the LAC, those are not the LAC, so similar colour to the LAC cars, but not part of the LAC team. Or is it? So that's the, th the third of the drivers, third of the uh, drivers. Lossio, defending okay. Brioni for eighth position. Okay, but this is what I'm interested in now. This yeah. battle once again rejoin for what will be the final podium position. Ferrari closes back up to the tail of the Mercedes into the Ascari. And Mercedes will use a bit more room on the exit. I'm assuming the Ferrari will be a bit neater and tidier. Well, pretty much even Stevens. And have a look up the road as well, because Mike Nobel is less than a second away from camera, second on the road, but that is for the race lead with the penalty applied to Noyok. So there's still a lot to shake out of this with four more minutes and counting. Remember Petit what has happened in all of those other races. The Mercedes have gone off at the end of the race because they yeah. can't quite get their tyres and fuel to the end. So you've got Mercedes versus Lamborghini at the head. You've got this one, Petit and Tonitza, Mercedes versus Ferrari. And it's going to go the way of the Italian marks, I think. The Ferrari challenging down into turn one. Here they come, yeah, side by he's side. Got, he's got to go, he had to go the wrong side. And that's unlikely. Well, he's done Ooh. it. He has done it amazingly. He's done what he And the Mercedes has got all out of shape on the exit of the first chicane. I mean, outstanding bit of driving by Tonitzi, and unfortunately, Petit suckered for it, and let, he lost that position. He didn't need to lose it, but he did. And not only that, but because he had the slide, Tonitzi doesn't even have to defend, does he? He can just drive away straight away. So don't worry about defending for a couple of corners. Straight away, he's gone. He can chase after Mike Nobel. So going back to Ben's point about the Mercedes going off towards the end. Yes, that has been the case. Camera, though, was very good at looking after his car in the earlier semi-final. But Mike Nobel is getting closer all the time. It was a second. It's now six tenths. Noyox leads, but he's got this penalty. Plus, we're not con uh, convinced he's going to keep the fuel in the car to the very end. So <laughs> as far as the race is concerned, it could be a real picture for camera or it could be a Nobel Prize. Oh, very good. I'll tell you, that bit of chocolate cake you're eating, David, has gone to your head. <laughs> Must be good stuff probably got some beer in it here they come down to the parabolica once more but you can see the lamborghini getting closer and closer and tonitza is throwing everything at it behind in the ferrari isn't he absolutely as he should do it's a motor race it might be a sim race but there's still a motor race i reckon we've just got two laps remaining as well because now yonks will be over the start finishing line already uh, or the finishing line here in monza and therefore uh, we will probably get two more laps in unless he really slows down uh, on his last lap, which means it gives more time for Nobel to try and find a way past camera. Close so, to this time. Noyox is seven seconds ahead, but now camera is having to defend. So he's going slower. So if Noyox has enough fuel, that gap's going to stretch. I'm not saying it's going to stretch to over 15 seconds, but this battle behind him might just help him, Ben. What do you think? And now, because of the gaps, uh, Noyox would only fall into fifth position. Uh, if he does, does, if he is able to finish the race as well. So it's been a, a great recovery if he's got the fuel. And again, fastest lap of the race, a 47.6. He's only less than a second off what he did in qualifying. Well, surely if he was marginal, we'd know about it by now with only a minute to go because in the first race, we had Hosseini's problems evincing themselves before this point. And yet Noyox, with a minute to go, isn't showing any sign of it, whereas Nobel is all over the back of camera for the real race lead. There's going to be one more lap to go at the end of this. Brilliant way to round out the day, isn't it, in terms of this action at Monza, because as they come now down towards the Variante Ascari once again, Alpha Camera is under huge attack from a hard-charging Mike Nobel behind him. And what's great, David, to me is we've got three different manufacturers, first, second and third. We had Mercedes locking out the front four positions for maybe a third of the race, but now it's Mercedes leading Lamborghini second, Ferrari third, as it should be. So again, the BOP delivers great racing. The leader will go through onto his last lap then. So the leader is on his last lap. Camera comes through second on the road. Mike Nobel behind him. 
It was two tenths at the last sector. It's four tenths across the line. So it's now or never for Mike Nobel. One more lap to go. What a race this has turned out to be. And still, Ben, somehow Norjok leads by nearly eight seconds. He has done such an amazing job this second half of the race. Oh, yes, he's got a penalty for contact, but his pace has been blistering. If he can get it to the, the line, he deserves a huge virtual pat on the back. It's absolutely incredible to see, especially when you've got other drivers in Mercedes struggling on these last couple of laps. Axel Petit, three seconds slower than he was last time through in fifth position. So he's actually opening a gap for Nils to fit into. And he's been able to do this by having to punch a hole in the air all the way through. Now, this is for John, the inherited race lead. Who's your money on? Can the Mercedes fend off the Lamborghini? Unless an act of God or a, a biblical flood, yes. So camera looking strong. There is Tonitsa dropping back a little bit in fourth place. There is the real fight then between Camara and Nobel. Up front, leaning on the road, is Nils Noyox. Down towards the Variante Ascari they come. This is where we need to be looking because this will determine who inherits the win. Not the way you want to win necessarily by a penalty for somebody else, but they'll take it, I'm sure. So Mike Nobel in the Lamborghini runs out wide. That's going to just compromise him a little. Not quite close enough as they come down to the Parabonica. Tony is off in the background into the barrier. Big impact for the Ferrari. So two corners from home, Tonitsa is off the road. Here they come, Nobel has got to do it. Coming out of the last corner, is this the moment that he can make the move? I don't think he's close enough. Camera is going to be able to hang on in there as they come up towards the line. And so Noyox crosses the line ahead, but Arthur Camera will inherit the win as he comes through ahead of Mike Nobel in second place. And what about third? David Tonitsa just ahead of Axel Petit as they come up towards the line. The Ferrari just gets there ahead. Axel Petit, behind him wow what a way to end what has been an absolutely outstanding trio of gt esports races from monza so on lacy guys coming over the line in uh, with tonazzo leading santoro brioni got uh, ahead of lozio in the end dennis lynn does pick up 10th position as we predicted but have a, look at a where, no, have a look at where noyox finishes because that puts him in third place. Ow. Because of Tonitsa's spin and the delay, that still puts New York in the top three. Amazing. Incredibly impressive driving from New York to get the car to the end with such pace. His pace was blistering. Well, we're not done yet. Look, still they have to come through for lower positions with the David Perel Ferrari going 18th, Honchik's Lamborghini for 19th, Solax BMW for 20th as they come across the line. David Ibrivio goes through. And Arthur Camera, who was a wild card, wasn't he? He had to pay and qualify. He wasn't an invited sim driver. Well, he's the man that comes out on top. Three races, three different winners, two for Ferrari, one for Mercedes. And action all the way. Still, they come pouring home. Camera, the winner from Nobel, Noyox, Petit. Tosato taking fifth after his spin. No, correction. Tonitsa taking fourth. Screen updating itself. So Tonitsa fourth ahead of Petit. Tosato sixth from Santoro, Brioni, Losio. Dennis Lind in tenth at the end. Whew. What do we think, John? Impressed? Bit of a wake up call for me because it's a <laughs> brand new world. I mean, it's a horizon I didn't realize was about to dawn on me. So it's very interesting, very exciting. A lot to learn about it. I've got huge respect for the, the, the gamers that are doing this. You know, that's their profession in some cases, day in, day out. Great job by Dennis Lind, I think, first. No, he wasn't, in fact. But certainly those pro drivers who are adapting from racing and uh, coming into sim racing. So I suspect we're going to see a number of other events later this year, waiting for the real thing to get back underway. Well, John, thanks for joining us, for you and for me. It's been a wake-up call, but um, it wouldn't be a, a, a SRO GT World Challenge Europe race without you. So I'm glad you've been able to join us for the final. And Ben, we've seen some great racing all day long, and I know you're more uh, adroit at this than John and I, but, I mean, this has been an outstanding platform on which to enjoy some great racing. And what makes it 
pleasurable for me is to hear how excited and how uh, enjoyable you found it as well, bringing <laughs> new people into the sport. Because honestly, this is the time to do this kind of thing. This is the opportunity for uh, people who know about esports to educate those that don't and see that they really, really enjoy it. And I'm glad you have. Well, Ben, thank you very much indeed. Now, of course, presiding over all of this from his desk in the studio has been Jack Nichols, who's got drivers, I think, uh, ready to talk to. Thank you very much to all of you from all around the world with whatever your broadband connection has been that have been able to join us for some fantastic racing. Um, and thank you, um, Sim Racing, for teaching some old dogs some very new <laughs> Jack, it's all yours. Thank you very much, David. Yes, what a what a very entertaining end to the to the race that was, and a, a, an entertaining race in general, and a controversial race in general as well. I, I have to say, um, uh, yeah, I don't know where to start. Ben, you've been you've been across all the all the chat in the uh, in the in, in the YouTube and things like that in the YouTube. How do I sound there? But uh, is there a sort of consensus as to sort of who was to blame for that for that race defining moment? Unfortunately, because we didn't see it, a lot of the people also didn't see it. Ah, they, okay. They were able to watch on um, on Niels Nelyox's stream. Some of these drivers have been doing their own, showing themselves driving. Uh, so I think uh, they've been watching uh, how he got on and obviously seeing Niels's point of view. Uh, but it's... Uh, it was, it's a difficult one. It's always a difficult one when it's contentious to, to make an instantaneous decision. And at least we've come to the end of the race knowing who won and who came second and who came third. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, 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 the, that's the right thing. And it's very pleasing to, uh, to see that for sure. Um, we're going to try and show you the, the replay of, uh, of what happened between those two. Uh, as you may have figured, I'm having some uh, technical issues as well with the, with the camera, but we're nearly there. Okay. So uh, in, a, in a moment, we'll all uh, be back on board and see exactly what happened in the, uh, in the incident. But uh, I've got it in my... I think, I'm, I think we're seeing it, or okay, I'm seeing it at the moment. Go for it, Ben. That's really interesting. Hussein even jumped across the chicane at the first chicane. So now Yox tries to go to the outside of him and Hussein just squeezes him onto the grass. Uh, now Yox had nowhere to go, but there was contact made. He could have backed out of it, but he didn't. And unfortunately sent Hussein hard into the wall on the outside of uh, the Kerber Grande. It so wasn't it all started with really? Hussein coming off the track. No, no. I, I, I honestly don't quite know how to how to read that one. And like we say, this, the race stewards that we have, the race directors have to make a decision. And I suppose it is the, you know, usually it comes down to the responsibility of the driver behind not to hit the driver in front. It's a very nuanced situation. I appreciate that, this one, but I guess that's the kind of fundamentals of it. Jack, it's very similar to a Mercedes accident that John and I had to talk about at Monza last year, which was uh, Remen Voss being tagged by Jim Pla. And John and I were absolutely convinced that Jim Pla, who was behind, was not at fault. And the steward said, no, absolutely, he was the guy at fault because he was behind. He could have backed out of it. And it seems very similar. It's a, a light touch. And yes, Noyox could have backed out of it. But at that speed and that split second decision, I'm not really sure he had any option. He was committed to where he was. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really, really difficult one. And that's why it's caused so much uh, controversy on the chats. But uh, ultimately, we know who the winner was. It wasn't Noyox. And um, even though he got that penalty, if you take that out of the equation, it was a very strong drive from Noyox. Very. Yeah, and he made the fuel last. It was excellent. And you might, Jack, I think, even be able to hear from Niels if you're... Okay, yeah. Here we, here we go. Let's, let's see what happens. I think we're all back up and running now. Uh, let's uh, be joined by Niels then. Niels, I mean... Uh, a dominating drive, a commanding drive, but obviously the big, the big talking point is that is that penalty you got, 15 seconds. What did you make of the incident? Uh, uh, I had to spend half of the race thinking about it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm, I'm very sorry that Amir couldn't finish the race because he has the pace to be up front. But uh, it seemed that he was struggling for a couple laps there, and then um, he ended up cutting the first corner which gave me a run on him into uh, the long right-hander. And first he blocked me to the right, so I went to the left and then he blocked me again, but I was already having overlap, so I didn't really know where to go. 
Yeah. So do you, uh, a harsh penalty, do you think, or you were the driver behind and it's your responsibility not to hit him? <laughs> hard to, hard to judge that, uh, with the emotions in that. Yeah. So, uh, I'll leave that to, uh, to the ju adjudication probably. I mean, I find, give it, give me five seconds. Then I appreciate that I have a part in this, but yeah. it still wouldn't cost me the win. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, what about overall your uh, your experience today? You enjoyed it? <laughs> uh, definitely. It was was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people were watching my personal stream as well. Um, I liked what uh, Kunos has put up. What uh, the GT World stream has brought up here. Quite a professional um, presentation overall. I think there was some good racing going on until that point. I was expecting a couple more people to be very close to me, but I think they were caught in traffic and. Um, some just were, were unlucky with um, qualifying since everything was so close. And if you just miss out on a 10th on your lap, then you're a 10 places down. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sven Kotsunduras here. I just wanted to ask you a little bit uh, about the pace at the second half of the race, banging in 47s for lap after lap. You're not worried about the fuel? Um, no. So at the beginning of the race, I had the chance to stay in Amir's draft a bit. So I was lifting for 100 meters on the straight at least or so. So I was saving some fuel early in the race. And then uh, the Mercedes has some interesting fuel maps. So you can save something all the way. And I did some calculations earlier um, before the race, actually. And I knew um, if I take uh, map two, I think, until lap 23 and then switch to map one, I can put the power down until the end. Great. Well, thank you very much, Nils, for joining us. Uh, commiserations for the race, but really impressive pace, nevertheless. Cheers. Uh, we can now speak to Arthur Camera. What a drive. What a race. Uh, Arthur, how are you feeling after that one? Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty unexpected also, because um, I've seen it now in a, in a, in a replay. Uh, there's a bit of controversy going on about the uh, Nils and Amir accident. And I surely wasn't hoping for anything like this, but... As soon as I, I saw it for the first time, the, the way they're going at each other, I was basically just waiting for something to happen. But of course, <laughs> I would have never thought it would unfold like this. And yeah, from from then on, I just had to keep uh, Mike behind. And he luckily made a few mistakes himself. And I was, as, as Neil said, um, good on fuel using Map2 the whole race. And uh, once Mike closed in, I was, it was easy for me to switch back to uh, map one and just gain those extra bit uh, tenth on the straights back. So, uh, were, were you yeah. aware of Niels's penalty, or, or were you yes. not? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, what do you think of the penalty, having seen the replay? I think it's definitely up for discussion. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's a good, was... Nice answer. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm friend, I'm friends. Sorry. So uh, we can uh, now hear from uh, Mike Noble as well. Thank you very much for joining us, Arthur. Congratulations again. Uh, Mike, you nearly got Arthur towards the end there. Yeah, I almost uh, managed to, to get uh, to P1, basically. But yeah, I had a couple of, uh, couple of mistakes. Uh, kept on dropping, uh, dropping pace all the time and wasn't able to do it, unfortunately. But uh, congratulations to Arthur. And were you pleased with your performance in general? A second place is a great result. Yes, I'm uh, very pleased with my performance today, for sure. Okay, congratulations. Thank you very much for joining us, Mike. Uh, so there we go. We've heard from our race winner, Arthur Camero. We've heard from uh, Mike as well after finishing in second position. Uh, Mike Nobel there. And um, remember, this is a charity race supporting the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund for the World Health Organization. So if you want to donate, head to sro-esport.com and you can donate there. All the proceeds from this race uh, are going to that charity. Um, we we also have David Tanitzer and Dennis Lind, I think, in the chat with us. Uh, David, we'll start with you. I guess it all went wrong in qualifying? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. I've done a pretty good time. Uh, it was lower than the, the first battery, but it was uh, still a pretty good one. And yeah, then in the race, uh, I had to gain back uh, a lot of position. So yeah, that wasn't the, the, the best start position. Okay, but were you happy with how the race unfolded in the end? You had some great fights out there. Yeah, yeah, I had some great fights. The, the race was pretty good. Uh, but in the last lap, I 
uh, I went over over a bump uh, as I done every lap. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know why I lost control of the car, and I'm a little bit disappointed because in, in that moment I was in P3 actually with the with the penalty in front. So yeah, a bit disappointed. Okay, well, congratulations, nevertheless, on your uh, on your race uh, one victory. That was very impressive, and best of luck for the future. Thank you, thank you. No worries. Uh, Dennis Lind as well, the, the cream of the crop when it comes to the real-world racing drivers. Dennis, good good progress today after uh, not the greatest qualifying for the, for the final, but a long way up the order you climbed. Yeah, it was a really bad performance for me in Q. I basically had only one lap. And uh, I had to block height cutter on the last corner, so I'm a little bit sorry about that. But it was the only attempt I had. Uh, every, it was very dense in the group where I found myself in, so I had to abort my my third lap, which is usually the quickest one for me. And um, yeah, that put me in P20, I think. And uh, well, it was onwards and upwards from there, basically. Found myself in tenth after five or so laps, and yeah made slow progress it was a lot of fun but uh not not quite enough in the end okay uh what if you'd have hooked up your qualifying lap where do you think you could have started uh pole definitely oh, really? okay wow <laughs> okay then 20th wasn't ideal was it but uh no. congratulations dennis and we hope to see you on a on a real track soon yeah me too thank you for casting this guys it's been a pleasure no worries. Thanks, Dennis. So uh, there's Dennis Lynn, the top of the real world racing drivers in the end, climbing all the way back up the order. And uh, there we go. We've heard from our, our top guys. Um, ben Constantjuris, I suppose, final thoughts from you on this SRO Esport Charity Challenge. You, you had a statement yesterday uh, on another stream about uh, the most realistic simulator that oh, exists. Oh, come and, on. Uh, I knew this would come back to, yeah. <laughs> um, I think we found it right here. How beautiful it looked, how professional the drivers raced it, how challenging it is as well. Uh, I think certainly it's, uh, you know, we don't see many streams from Assetto Corsa Competizione uh, globally. And we've, uh, I think we've showed a very high bar today. Amazing yeah, to see. Uh, yeah, agreed with that. Uh, what are you, are you still with us or have you gone? Oh, he's gone. Okay. Well, David Addison, then your, your thoughts are welcome to Simra. I think you loved it. I think you loved it. Oh, yes. uh, it's motor racing, isn't it? Whether it's yeah. real in front of you, something you can touch, or whether it's on a screen, and, and you can see it. And it has been a, a, a fascinating experience to get involved in this. It has been three great races. Um, and you've got to take your hat off to everybody involved in making it happen, the technical side, all the drivers for getting involved, and thank you to all of you for watching. Have I enjoyed it? Yes. Was it something that I was slightly um, looking to with trepidation? Yes, because as you both know, it was a whole new world for me, but <laughs> it's been fantastic. And part of the, the fact that it becomes easier is that the game, and Ben has touched on this, is so realistic. Not only does it look good, but the, the, the way the cars perform, tyres, BOP, you name it, makes you believe until I look out of my window in my room here, that I am at Monza and I am watching cars on a circuit. It has been fantastic. More, please. More. <laughs> well, there we go. There's the demand from Adders. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure we'd all like to see more from uh, SRO Esports in the future. A thank, huge thanks to them. For, uh, huge thanks to Kunos uh, Simulazioni as well for putting on the putting on the race as well as AK Informatica, all the guys in Bergamo, all the guys in Milan uh, and everybody around the world that has contributed to what has been a really great GT racing spectacle. There's a lot of, uh, you know, single seater sports out there, and, uh, uh, but it's really nice to see some tip top GT action. This has been the SRO eSport Charity Challenge on Assetto Corsa Competizione, all a charity event to aid the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund for the World Health Organization. All the proceeds from this event are going to that charity. If you want to donate, donate, donate to that charity, head to uh, sro-esport.com and you can find out about more events coming up in the future. From uh, John Watson, Ben Constant Juris, David Addison, myself, Jack Nichols, and all of the rest of the team, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.